Thanks for staying with us. Now, networking has long been recognized as a powerful tool for business people and professionals. Knowing more people gives you greater access, facilitates the sharing of information, and makes it easier to influence others for the simple reason that influencing people you know is easier than influencing strangers. Is this true? How true is this? And does the saying, your network is your network, uh, does it always apply? Now, please let us hear what you have to say. Remember, you can join us. Um, tweet at us at Plus TV Africa or at Ways Show Africa one with the hashtag Ways, or send us an SMS or WhatsApp to zero eight one eight zero three eight four six six three. The hashtag is Ways Show actually. Um, so, ladies, um, let me start with Shell. Uh, are you big on networking? Uh, okay, so I would say yes and no. Okay. So yes, in the sense that you need people, you need to build relationships in order to, uh, you know, access some doors. You need people to open up those doors for you. Absolutely. And no, in the sense that it, it could get very manipulative, very calculating. You are just meeting people because of what you want to get from them, not because you are interested in them or what they are doing. Sometimes it could be selfish, and it could be incredibly difficult also because. You don't even know how to go about it, especially if you're an introvert. Mm. And like, okay, you're not at an event, and you're sitting like, okay, how do I go about it? Who do I talk to? Or you're naturally shy like me, and like, okay, really? I'll just rather, <laughs> I'll just rather, you know, just sit and just just observe. And if someone walks up to me, I'll be like, okay, yeah, let's talk. But you know, actively going out there, you know, it's, it's it's a bit difficult for me. But of course, you know that this is what you have to do. You have mm. to do it. Well, being know, has, has there been a situation where you have actually leveraged on a network to, to advance in your profession or in your career? Yes. Okay. Yeah. Maybe you should share a little bit of that. Um, so I, before law school, yes, so I did my internship in Assam and then I met um, a lot of people. And because of the relationship I had and abuse with um, my supervisor, my mentor then, and after law school, she called me up and said, oh, so what are you doing now? What are your plans? I said, I, I think I want to go into practice now. And she says I should come back mm. to the firm. And I did my um, NYSC. There. The there. Absolutely. So it was because I, I, I wasn't a good mentee per se, but then because I kept the relationship, mm. I reached so out. So you, you, you agree with the quote about not just yes. collecting contact, not actually just collecting, building, a building a relationship. Because I see that a lot of times when they say they're doing networking events, you just see people going about collecting call cards. cards. I can tell you for free. <laughs> I have collected business cards that it ends up, you know what I deliberately do? Mm. I make sure I leave it in that bag. The bag that I went for the event, I leave it there so that I don't forget, forget the event. Me. So I leave it there maybe when I now need it. But I never, you know, but I had a very amazing coach, um, God rest his soul, RDJ. Mm. He taught me how wow. to don't take the card. Make sure as you are collecting the card, you are typing the number. In fact, type the person's birthday. Wow. Put a reminder on your phone. If yeah. that like if that contact is really important, important to you, too. put the person's birthday on your phone. Set a reminder because what people would what you would leave with people is an impression, impression. about you mm -hmm. and you never can tell where it will you know show up right you don't know where it will show up but i really like to ask a question maybe we then ask yes. Gina, Gina. but i think we sort of have this methodical um, approach towards networking where you need to you know sort of you know introduce yourself your one minute pitch, this Elevator is what I do. Pitch. Do you have problems that I can solve? I cannot be of help. So I, I feel like if a lot of people really understand how to be natural with mm. networking, and I, and I think um, Gina's... Um, well, Gina is quite an today. interesting uh, conversation I have with Gina because let me tell you, I met Gina many, many years ago. In mm. fact, I can't remember what year it was. But um, I just know that she left an impression with me. Mm. And when I was looking for the, the best, um, what's it called, um, guest to have this conversation with, and somebody just went and said, oh, wow, I remember her. You know, and it was so interesting. As soon as I reached out to her, she was such an amazing. So let us bring in Gina, Gina. London. Gina London is the CEO of Language of Leadership. She is a renowned global expert on leadership communications with clients in five continents. She represents some of the top companies and executives in the world. 
An Emmy-winning former CNN correspondent and anchor, Gina brings her passion for people and storytelling as she develops leaders to more positively connect and engage with their employees, their boards, and themselves. And she's joined us live from London. Gina, <laughs> it's such an honor to have you live on Waze. Is she there? I think you need to unmute your mic, Gina. <laughs> <laughs> oh. that was i'm such a pro i forgot to unmute my mic <laughs> thank hi, you so hi much to, hi Hello, people. Gina. Hi, hi, Gina. So great to see all of you ladies honestly what a wonderful time to be with you thank yeah. you so much i, I was just telling bimbo and she was such an amazing personality i mean you left a very very strong impression when i met you many many years ago and i'm so happy that we're having this conversation i mean no better guest to have this conversation with you know on networking you know should, do you want to just share a little bit because you've heard our banter on the on, on on how i mean what networking is to us and how we've leveraged on networking probably you want to just give us a little bit of background before we start to ask our questions absolutely well first of all we're an example of networking aren't we mm, yeah it's the power of relationships and that quote that you put up is exactly the idea it should not be working. Networking is not working. It's making friends. Mm. It's taking a curiosity and an interest in other people. And that is really the foundation of what I teach people is just how to reawaken your interest in other human beings and genuinely show that you care and you value them. That's what networking is. And I hate it when people say, oh, well, it's always not what you know, it's who you know. And I say, of course, it's who you know. <laughs> It's mm. important to know things too, but if I had two CVs or resumes or that came to me that wanted to work for my company and one of them, and they both had the same credentials, but one of them came referred to me by you, I'm going to probably interview and listen to that person in a different way than the other person. And that is simply just the power that you were sharing too, I think it was Bimbo, about how the connections do help yeah. so making them it doesn't have to be manipulative but if it's purposeful and it is really over time you will find like here we are talking it was 2014 when we met actually wow that's such a well, long time when rdj <laughs> introduced us and here we are six years later, and that's the power of relationships, which I think is a nicer word than networking. Absolutely. I love the fact that you're talking about, um, you're changing the narrative to relationships. Um, I just wanted to ask a question before I'll let um, Shen Wu and um, Bimbo come in. We are a very money-centered um, people where we place premium on the net, the net worth of someone. Like we look at your financial status right before we even try to say hello you know how does that even tie up to getting um quality relationship building quality relationships well it's an interesting question because i mean i live in europe but my I'm, my accent you can tell i'm american and america is a very money driven capitalistic country as well i remember going to those networking events in fact when somebody would be talking to me but you could tell they're not actually looking at me. They're looking over my shoulder to see who is more influential or who has more status in that room that they can leave me for and go talk to. And those kinds of people are the kind of people that won't be trusted relationships anyway. Mm. The kind of people that can't get to connect at a heart level or really care mm. are people that will be the ones that are collecting all those business cards or they're reaching out to everybody on LinkedIn, but they don't have any real substance be behind that strategy. And I think those kind of people will be found out or their legacies, like you were just talking at the beginning about our dear shared friend, Richie Dio Johnson, mm. who passed away in July, who passed away of a massive heart attack the very morning or afternoon after he had been giving of himself again in a virtual webinar that I was a part of about how to network, how to connect. He was connecting to the very day that he died. He died, yeah. It's okay. And so, that's a okay. real legacy. Absolutely. All right, Gina. Okay, so uh, I, wanna, I want to ask, so networking for introverts. So I've been, yes. I would consider myself an introvert, so I don't know if you'd share any tips 
on how to and how to network, considering that you know you're naturally reserved, you don't want to go out of your way to yes. meet people. You'd rather yes. just be by yourself. Yes, because so you were yeah. saying it, I heard you earlier when you were talking about how how you feel like you're you're a bit shy, you're a bit introverted, and it's true that the idea of networking, especially this in-person networking, can feel very superficial. It can feel very speed dating, running around trying to get everybody's name and number for you, very selfish. Mm -hmm. But what's great, two things, if you're in a live face-to-face -face type of meeting and you can just make beforehand some strategy about people that you'd like to meet. Mm -hmm. I always try to get a guest list before I go to a networking event to find out who's going to be in the room, who's holding the event, Who's the president of that organization? Were you being brought in as a member or as a guest? Do some research beforehand. And a lot of those people you can actually connect with beforehand on LinkedIn or another social media platform and say, hey, I see that you're going to this and I'm here and I'd love to connect with you. And maybe you could even find something that you're interested in beforehand. That's one. Two, when you're in the room, if you're in an in-person networking event, Give yourself a break and don't try to meet 25 people. Mm -hmm. Make three conversations of about 10 minutes each and you'll have more lasting seeds being planted. I think that quote is a good one because it talks about how relationships have to grow over time. You don't plant a seed and the very next day expect there to be a tree when you wake up in the morning. Mm -hmm. So another yeah. thing, though, last thought on introvert, on the introvert networking, it's great right now in this lockdown restricted time that many countries are still going through collaboration online mm. i'm finding people are really open to and out of the blue hey i see we have this in common i'd like to connect and people have been doing that to me i'm doing that to other people don't sell them right away don't connect and then the very next text message or the next LinkedIn message says, and I really want you to give me a resume or a recommendation, <laughs> or I really want you to buy something, or I really want you to mentor me. Don't do that hard sell, mm. but you can begin to plant those seeds, I think, as an introvert online, that's a real easy way just to type, hit send, see what happens and build a network over time. Wow. Does that help? Absolutely. It does. Absolutely. Thank you, Gina. <laughs> You're welcome. Hi, Gina. So my Hi. my question is, um, no doubt, social media has made networking a little bit more easier, right? And I discovered, particularly among um, millennials, that we are sort of missing out on human interaction. So how do you create a balance between, you know, so using social networks and then also um, engaging people one on one, as well? Well, and, and see, that's the thing. I mean, there, the, in the day of influence, depends on what you mean by networking and, and influencing and all these words that are being used about, do you have a million followers and none of them really know you? Or do you have 10 great contacts who really have stayed with you for years and you know you can rely and depend on them if you have a request or a question or something like that? Those strengths, the strength of relationships that are deeper and have been proven over time, I think those are going to be, be more valuable for you over time because you could have a million followers on a social media platform and something happens to you and they don't like it and they could all disappear because they're not really invested in your heart or they don't really know you as a person. But if you spend time on the platforms that you're working at to actually make real relationships, maybe you could start off with a couple of LinkedIn, again, professional networking, not so much in the social media influencer style. But if you are trying to advance your career or you're trying to meet people through LinkedIn, if you have, a, like for me, I have a couple of ways that I reach out to people and I'm strategic about who I work, I reach out to. So that's another thing is think about what your goal is. What, who are the kinds of people that you're looking to meet what are their career titles? What are the companies they work for? Do your research beforehand and then go try to find those people. When you connect with them, give a real professional reason for why you want to connect. Try to find if there's, if it's just purely their title or the field that they're in, or if you have some other way that you have a rapport. Secondly, then over time, you can ask them, back to your question of making a deeper relationship, 
you can ask them to have a virtual coffee. Look at us here, miles apart, but in a Zoom room and we're meeting and we're getting to know each other a little bit better than just online without the video. If you can get to that virtual coffee, I think you do make another step toward building a relationship. All right, so so Gina, um, th this is quite interesting because I love the the fact that you talked about no better time um, to 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 learn networking, especially now that everyone is forced to stay home. There's COVID nineteen. You must collaborate, and everything has to be done online. So how do you you know how do you identify? Because you talked about opportunities that there are uh, th that we have on on LinkedIn. How do you identify fraud? I mean, we, we talked about cybersecurity, um, I think, about two weeks ago. And, uh, and um, the guests we had talked about how someone created um, a pseudo account. You know? So how are we able to strike that balance between talking to a real person and talking to someone that has probably created a pseudo account? Where do we draw that line so that we do not fall into the hands of you know the wrong people? You know? Yeah. Well, yeah. The, I, I actually do, I do. I do a lot of work in, in my communications consultancy around social social engineering and that's one of the ways hackers will get access to people's accounts and that sort of thing it's not usually just by tech it's by psychology so one of the first things to think about when you are networking is first of all identify your goal what are you trying to do if you're just casting a net out to everybody all the time first of all linkedin will block you if you try to connect to more than 50 people in one day unless you're premium or on sales navigator so think about what you're doing and the speed of what you're, you're doing it. You're not a robot. Try to bring that human into what you're doing. Then if you're on the receiving end, if you're getting a message from someone, again, test your gut. I once had a very famous person I inter interviewed, American a feminist named Gloria Steinem. And she said a great line. Test, she said, if it smells like a duck and it looks like a duck and it sounds like a duck, but your gut says it's a pig, it's a pig. Yeah, wow. <laughs> absolutely. <laughs> true, true. And so if you're, first of all, if you're, on the re, if you're on the reaching out networking end and you've identified for me, for example, I do a lot of work with the learning and development departments of organizations because they want their senior leadership team or their emerging leaders to feel more confident and comfortable about how they engage. So if I'm looking for other multinational organizations that I haven't worked with, I'll identify maybe, okay, financial. Okay, let's look at Zenith Bank. Let's look at GT Bank. Let's look now and Google who's the current L&D director? Who's the current HR director? Then I get those names from LinkedIn and I plug them into, into I get them from Google, I plug them into LinkedIn. Now, feasibly, I suppose, someone could have already done that and set up a pretend account of that person. But it wouldn't probably take you too long to find out if that person who's the fake one is being maybe too warm or too promising right mm -hmm. away. I and mean, if someone's asking you for your bank account information yeah. right away, that's probably <laughs> a big red flag that it's a pig, right? Absolutely. But if you're starting to just get to know them and say, hey, I read this great article. I'm trying to give you something of value. Here's this link to this article. Again, the whole purpose of networking is to build a relationship. You don't go on a first date and then ask them to marry you the next day. Of course not. <laughs> Absolutely not. All right, so we're going to take a very short break. When we return, we'll still have Gina London with us. Please stay with us. We'll be right back.